Hello everybody, my name is Raga and I'm an artist, a designer, a teacher, a mentor and today we are going to be drawing some stuff together. So, like always, I like to start my stream by talking a little bit about what we talked about last time. So yesterday we were talking a little bit about bodies and we were talking about how we essentially learn how to distinguish the hard surfaces from the little squishy parts of our body and then how we can use that form of viewing things to be able to map out our bodies a little bit easier. That helps you a lot, especially when it comes down to situations that require foreshortening and weird angles. It also, we also talked a little bit about how important it is to keep your mental library up to date and how it's just going to be easier for you to be able to draw things from memory the more that you have actual live experience. So you have to go out, live life and doodle. All right, so, and then the one before that, we did bodies and we talked about like structures, but today's theme is gonna be bodies. Actually, no, it's gonna be heads. We're gonna draw heads today. And we're just gonna go around, Just we're just gonna draw a lot of heads. Why? Because the head is one of the most important parts of the body. And it's something that you need to learn how to draw properly in how to draw efficiently, in how to draw with proper expressions. And you need to learn the little mannerisms and little tips and tricks that mean learning not just from a style, but learning what the actual elements are in your face so that you can actually draw it regardless of what the situation or the program, uh, you know, project that you're in. So drawing the head is not necessarily a massive endeavor. It is just a matter of understanding the placement of things so that you can actually draw things as stylized or as least stylized as you want. Now, the way that I like to point it out, we have from your, uh, let's say from a profile, right? From your profile, we have a couple very important aspects to our face. We have our eye indent. Right? And that is this little crevice that goes normally it's your nose bridge. And that's where your nose canal comes out of. That goes into your forehead slash eyebrow line. So that is one thing that I like to keep in mind. And then whenever you're considering drawing your nose on top of this stuff, consider that your nose has a little bit of bone before it goes into the cartilage. So whenever you are drawing your characters, remember that your nose has a little bit of bone, hard surface, and then it starts going into whatever crazy nose you guys want to do. Right? But it always has a little tiny bit of bone. And that's because your skull sits right there. Your skull has a little nose socket, right? So if you have your little nose socket, that little nose socket has a tiny bit of a lip. And that is what kind of guides your nose. But anyways, after that, after you understand the eye socket, that is also the middle of where your eyes are going to go. So your eyes, regardless of the shape you choose, Wherever that little eye socket is, that is where your eyes are going to go. Okay. And that is also with three quarter views. Wherever that little 
pose is. That's where your eyes should go. Okay. Ooh, someone just sent something. Hey, you sent a butterfly. Oh, thank you for the butterfly. Um, yeah, I don't really understand how the whole gifting thing works, but I know that you guys can share the stream. If you guys share the stream, then more people get to see what we learn. And that is uh, honestly the best way that you guys can help me out. So if you guys want to click that little share button, it doesn't take much. And you guys get to share this with a lot more people. So as you guys can see, this little divot kind of fits exactly where your eyes are going to go. Oh, everybody can see it. Now this works really nicely to figure out angles whenever you are drawing things that are not necessarily flat. Right? Figuring out that little tiny step makes figuring out the angles a little bit easier. breaking it down into a smaller section where you have to worry about less. Gives you a more controlled approach to your drawings. Now, once you master this sort of stuff, right? Once you master that this little division is gonna be where your eyes go. Now we can start masking and figuring out the rest. Once you figure out the divot, which is one of the most important parts of actually figuring out in the phase, right? Once you figure that out, the next step is to figure out where your eyebrows are going to go. So let's figure out a random shape and we'll give it a divot right here. So once we have that, we know that this is going to be our eye line now. And then we get to dictate our eyebrows. So our eyebrow line, if this is our eyes, our eyebrow line is not too far above that. And this goes around. And then we have to find the nose. The nose, we're not going to draw an actual shape. We're just going to draw where the nose comes from. And then connect these two sides. Which is going to give you this little mask. Okay. This little mask is going to dictate a couple things. This middle part is going to dictate how wide your nose is. So if you have this skinny, your nose is going to be skinny. If you have this wide, your nose is going to be wide. Okay, so this area right here is going to dictate how wide your nose is. Cool. Once you understand that, then you can just connect the top of this nose canal to your forehead or to your eyebrow line. Now you have your nose bridge. And you have your eye sockets. <coughs> Inside your eye sockets, you need eyes. So let's add some eyeballs. Now, the eyeball is just a sphere inside of this. It's a sphere, right? So this is negative space because this is where your eye socket sinks into your skin, right? Another way of thinking about this is kind of like a cone or like a cup and you have a ball inside your cup. Okay, so this is essentially what's happening here. Only this is more like an actual skull. But that is the concept that is happening within this area. You have an eyeball that is inside 
of a cone or like a, a hole inside. So you have your eye socket and then you have your eye. Now let me explain to you why that's important to understand. Because the more that you draw dark lines around your eyes, it signifies that it's going deeper into the hole. So if you have a character that needs to be really old, right, you can draw these shapes and then instead of having your eye normal right here, sink it in even more. Sink them into that shape. So now they're super sunken in. You know they're going to have like shadows and stuff like that all over. And then the character is just going to look a little bit more ancient. Or on the other side, if you want to make this super cute, you can have your mask and then have your eyes be super wide. And then you have the complete opposite. Uh, how many years of drawing did it take you? Did it take me to what? To learn how to draw anatomy? To learn how to draw with a pen? To learn how to draw from memory? To learn how to draw professionally? Like, what is it that you are asking? Let me load up the chat on YouTube. Alright. Emily, what's up? Just brought your art book. Woohoo! So Emily has just bought my Art Blocks book. Art Blocks is the new book that came out from Rod Gone the Artist. And I wish that I uh, I guess I could, but then I'm gonna mess up the camera again. Um Yeah, I just released the book today. Uh, the book is essentially like most of the stream sketches that we have that we have done over the last like three, four months. And then we just I just compiled them into a nice big inspiration book. So you guys can actually go like purchase it. It's uh, ten dollars for any book. And once I get to the United uh, Nations, like when, uh, United Kingdom, whenever I actually establish myself over there a little bit, I'm going to get all those books printed and then I'm going to be able to sign them and send them to you guys and stuff like that. So, but the, the actual ebook is the way that I fund it. I don't do Patreons. I don't do anything like that because I don't like taking people's money, right? I don't like, uh, I don't like taking like, you know, like pre-orders are already like kind of like a uh, with me because I just don't like, like taking people's money. So if you guys do want to help support and get it, like help get it funded, fantastic. There's a couple books for you guys to actually purchase through my Instagram. Uh, so yeah, well that's it. Like that's the spiel. I I I they made a book. You guys are welcome to check it out if you guys aren't. Yeah, uh, I'm actually I'm in the process of learning or in like uploading how to do things through Amazon. So you guys can just order it through Amazon. That way you guys can get your hard covers, your soft covers, your Kindles, everything. Like actually the Kindle will probably like the digital version will be through me. Uh, but. Yeah, I, I, it's just a matter of uh, making sure that it's out there for you guys to be able to purchase. But it's just another way to help support if you guys do want to help support. Like I said, I do not like just taking your guys' money. That is one thing I do not like doing. So unless you guys are getting something out of it, uh, I really do not like asking for shit. But it's there if you guys want it. So are you send uh, anatomy mostly? Okay, so to be able to draw like this, it's a combination of things that happened in my life. Okay, let me explain to you guys how I achieved the ability to draw with this sort of stuff. And let me draw a little glove out of that. 
I think the glove is what throws off the lighting. Oh my god, it's the damn glove. Interesting. Interesting. All right, okay, so a few things that I learned to do in order to get good at drawing faces, heads, anatomy, and everything like that. One, I learned to draw in public. In public. This helps you get rid of any of your um, insecurities, any of your, like, you know, like anxiety problems. This is the most important thing you need to do if you want to actually be a live performer. If you want, this is live performance, by the way. Me doing this is live performance. This might not be like a theater or a play or a, an essay or a poem, but I'm performing for you guys live. So if you guys are looking to do anything similar to this, like being on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you need to learn how to perform in public. So get used to the idea of being in public. Get, learn to love how you look, how you sound, because you can't change that, right? You can't change the way you are. So you need to learn to love who you are. So be proud of yourself. Pride. <clears throat> and that comes in the form of pride in your work. Pride in what you are, who you are. And why you are. Okay? I learned to do this very early in my career. And thanks to that, even though I was not the best artist, and by far, I was not the best artist. Like, I was not great at all. So, uh, like, let, let me explain this to you. Like, when I was going to art school, I had never really taken any art classes before. So, when I was paired up with people that had been drawing for, like, 19 years at that point, it was terrifying. <clears throat> it was absolutely terrifying. It was horrifying. Seeing all these people, amazing artists, in their own right, just barely starting art school. And here I am. I did not even know how to draw on anything other than like a basic notebook with paper lines and stuff. And I'm just like, shit. I am the bottom of the totem pole. I am the scraggliest of the scraggliest of the bottom of the barrel. And I have to compete with these people for jobs in four years or three years holy shit i'm fucking terrified right so but i am not a person that has ever uh looked at things like that and like actually like back down so i was like fuck it i guess i just have to work five times as much as people fuck it i just gotta work six times oh, i guess ten times as much and I did. So, hard work. Work ethic. Okay, so if you have a hard work ethic, you're going to get far, regardless of your skill. You should see that none of this is even remotely, like, skill-based. So that means that nothing, like, nothing here that I'm mentioning requires you to be a good artist okay this will get you to be a good artist but <clears throat> you need to develop some habits normally to be able to get there i just got out of school hey coffee how to improve imaginary sketching uh chewy's walkabout i find it difficult to draw faces heads accurately from perspectives from the ground looking up example seeing goku's face as i was a tiny okay 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 okay. so you're having issues and this is and this is one that i want to plan out for this uh upcoming week because uh clip studio is having a little um i think it was like a little like contest 
and it was like a contest to see if you can teach people how to draw the head in different angles. And so I plan to uh, absolutely destroy that challenge. So I plan on making a tutorial that will explain how to see your faces and angles that are difficult, angles that might not necessarily always be easy to draw. Yeah, that angle's always weird. Like the angle from underneath, even with like like knowledge of anatomy and stuff like that, it's still like awkward from without like reference. But let's see. Cheekbones and two ears. Into my jawbone, into this, the cheekbones. Yeah, that's so weird angle. But it's a little bit less. Eh. We'll figure it out. And then we'll teach it. And then everybody will learn it. See, heads have always been something that I fascinate, like fascinate me. Uh, that's why I learned how to draw them early on in my career. I jumped and I did caricature work for a while. So caricatures are essentially uh, taking somebody's face and then just like breaking it down into shapes that just make it funny or cartoonify the person. I used to stand in front of the caricature stands for hours whenever I used to go to theme parks because I was just fascinated that somebody could even just create something that quickly, first of all, and second of all, that they would like be able to draw the human beings in front of them. That was like just super cool to me. So at one point I got a chance and I got the ability to be able to work for one of these companies and seeing as I wanted to actually get better I took them up on the offer now I also would go often to like downtown at like the age of 19 by the way 19 18 I was going down to bars just to draw people that were drunk um, that was like a would go to the hookah shops or anywhere that I was available, like able to get in, I would go in and draw as many people as I could. Not only would I come out with like a bunch of money from tips, but it was just also a very important aspect in my development because it gave me the confidence to understand that my artwork was valuable, right? It gave me an understanding in a, like a set value to my work early on in my career and I didn't have to really guess too much about like hey is my like portraiture caricature work even worth it no because people would be more than happy to throw like 50 60 dollars my way just because I drew them with their you know significant other or whatever so I was like okay cool this is the base value if I can make 50 dollars every 15 minutes then I guess my hourly value just went up to $200 an hour. That is how much money I can make in an hour if I work, you know, hard work. So therefore my new value for freelance work and any sort of work became $200 an hour. Because I truly valued the work that I was doing and I thought that I was well compensated for the time that I was doing 
And when you find that value, it's really, really good. Right? It's really good to understand that you are a person whose time and effort and, you know, like, has value. So if you don't know how much to charge, if you're another one of those people that just don't know, not know how much to charge, you don't know, like, or understand that aspect of, uh, of the art world yet, get used to it because it's something that you're going to need to learn to do, right? Start learning about like reading books, start like uh, figuring out different, you know, like approaches that other people do. If this is your career, you need to actually understand and conceptualize that. It's your career. So you need to learn how to make money with it. A doctor doesn't just do doctor stuff without getting paid. A plumber doesn't do plumber stuff without getting paid. An artist should not be doing artist stuff without getting paid. <clears throat> Never do something that you're good at for free if you can help. And that is one sentiment that my dad always instilled on me. If you are good at something and you want to make a living with that, don't do it for free necessarily. All right? Because you're good and you have value. And if you have value, other people will see that value. All right, so we have some how to improve imaginary sketching. Uh, okay, so if you want to improve imaginary sketching and you're sketching from your brain, you need to build a mental library. The mental library, we talked about it a little bit, but let's talk about it some more. Our mental library is essentially a collection of all the things that we have sketched out or we have drawn and we have successfully added to our memory. So if you have drawn something enough in which you are able to just recall it from memory, that I would say is part of your mental library. Everything from all the different types of eyes that you know how to draw, right? To all the types of poses that you've learned to draw hands in, and legs, and other body parts, like rib cages and stuff. So all that is stuff that is in your mental library but it's also the trees that you learn how to draw and you know your buildings and clouds and perspective and everything else that you see that could possibly be something that you've learned how to draw is part of your mental library. That includes monsters, that includes dragons, that includes everything that you have developed skills drawing is in there. Now, if you have only developed drawing through repetition or copying other people, that's fine. But at one point, you're gonna have to start trying to apply what you're learning to, for yourself. And that is when your mental library is going to start kicking in. The 
the way you develop your mental library is you actually go out and you live your life a little bit. You got to go out, you got to embrace things, you got to adventure, you have to like bring your sketchbook so that if you see anything interesting, you can sketch it. But it's a matter of actually wanting to understand what you're drawing. It's not just repetition, guys. Like repetition will get you the dexterity that you want. Repetition will get you the dexterity that you need for your day-to-day -day drawings and your work and stuff. But you need to be able to actually uh, break down the things that you're learning and study them. Don't just repeat what you know you see a million times. Draw it and then analyze it. Be like, okay, so what is difficult about this work? What what do I need to change here? How do, why do I not understand? Like if you're drawing a person in the head, right? Like, do you understand the curves that you're drawing? Do you understand the concept of volume, the muscles? And when you don't, because there will be points where you don't, we just don't, when you just don't get it, write it down, write it down right next to it. Make a note, be like, okay, I just really do not understand this part, huh? I wonder why. Let me let me look through this. This is my career. Let me let me figure this out, okay? Let me make sure that I understand this so that I can draw this better next time. Even if it's not for this project, it's next time. And then every time after that because, you know, these things just stick. It's not like you It's kind of like riding a bike. You just kind of just learn some things and they just click. And then it's really hard to forget them. But it normally takes a while for them to click properly. And that's the patience is not there for most people. Most people just don't have the patience to be able to sit down and be like, okay, uh, well, I know that I suck at hands, so I need to be better at hands. So how do I get better at hands? Oh, no, I'm just going to draw them all stylized like that. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to draw it like that. That's easier. Like, be really honest with yourself right now. And tell me that's not the case. At what point did you stop studying your anatomy? And actually, like, analyzing it and figuring out ways to draw it. At one point, we all stop doing it because we all think that we've already done enough work for it or we've already like, you know, studied enough or we have learned enough already. The silly thing is, it's like, like the people that think that studying anatomy and perspective is boring are the people that are always constantly asking like, well, uh, how do I get better? Uh, how do I like improve my style? How do I find my style? How do I find my style? How do I find my style? And without really understanding, your style comes from your knowledge of perspective. Combined with your knowledge of anatomy equals style so now you can do really cool things because you understand anatomy and perspective so now you can actually stylize things right coming up with styles is just a matter of knowledge if you have the knowledge, then you have the ability to do anything you want with those body shapes. Regardless of if they're animals, monsters, right? chibis.
so it's not hard to take those concepts and then start playing around with them once you understand them. But once you, if you don't understand them, you can't get there. So style is perspective and anatomy. Ta-da! This is what your style is. Your knowledge of perspective and anatomy. And your own little uh, spice of whatever you like. You know, you just can't understand how deep is my style. Yes. So is your new book cool book your previous sketchbook? It's uh, the sketchbook that has a bunch of like the streams combined. So. What I'm planning on doing uh, for this next next one is going to be to, this was 58, I'm going to link the streams to the pages so that people can go and draw along with it. Essentially, so that people can actually see it, be like, oh, I want to I wanna see how this was done. And then they can go on, click on it, and then they'll see the stream where it comes up. So that's what's the next one. That's going to be probably book number three. That'll be art block number three. Uh, number two is already in the works. Uh, if you want to... <laughs> if you want to learn how to um, to push your, uh, your shapes a little bit more, you need to do a progression of... Um, uh, this is what we used to do in theme parks uh, for caricature work okay so let's say we have mr. Stan right here Stan is an average human being now for our first level of caricatures we need to choose three features within our, uh, our features and then we have to make those bigger or you just have to exaggerate them. so i like to take the three features that are most predominant in the human being uh, but if nothing if they're very standard i normally go with your nose your eyes and your mouth if you can get these to look like them you tend to actually have like a very good shot at like making a decent character but in this case, we're going to just do a progressive uh, scale into making things more exaggerated. So let's take this guy and let's make uh, his nose a little bit bigger and his eyes a little small, a little bit bigger too. So we'll make his nose a little bit bigger. The mouth stays the same and the eyes a little bit bigger. Let's actually give him like eyes. All right, so that already changed the way that my character looks. Let's do a slightly longer head shape now. Just pushing that a little bit and we'll bring all those features along with it. Kind of like they're melting, like everything just starts curving down. Now you can start doing little hourglass things with this head shape. So now let's start. And remember the little divot, this little divot is where the eyes are, right? That's what we established. The little divot is where our eyes go.
And then, I totally missed this, but how do you grow your style? Can anyone? <laughs> okay, so we just talked about that. Uh, so, your style, how to find your style? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to get your style. Your style comes from your understanding of your foundations. Which are perspective. And that involves understanding most of perspective work, right? And your knowledge of the thing that you're supposed to be drawing. In this case, if you're doing things like I am, it's character design. Character designs are humans, right? Of top. So understanding for me in character design, it's the knowledge of anatomy because I need to know how things are built, right? And then I also need to learn things like clothing. I need to learn things like accessories, like garments, like anything that you are going to be using, you should be drawing these things, right? So let's say weapons. Like, like whatever etc so your knowledge of all these things combined with your knowledge of how to take basic elements and turning those into things is going to give you your style so how do you go from there from there you would take something as simple let's say as a say a cylinder and with some knowledge of a theme, let's say in this case, like a tiki mug, I can come up with a cool little tiki mug because I have that reference. Okay? So that is essentially what you're doing you're taking a simple cylinder and then you're just taking those elements and all the knowledge that you have from whatever theme that you are trying to be an expert at and then you just apply that to create your style but the knowledge of your foundations which in this case is heavily based on perspective is going to be what allows you to put your creativity spin on this. Now, when it comes down to something like anatomy, understanding that our leg, for example, now that we're going with legs a lot, right? So we have our leg. Our leg consists of a bunch of basic shapes going in different perspectives. Right? This one's going that way. This one's going this way. Like, it's just a bunch of different perspectives and a bunch of different angles. And it's normally, like, sometimes really hard to be able to think like this and then applying it the other way. Or even, like, starting with basic shapes like, like the cylinders and stuff like that. Sometimes that's hard to understand like how your muscles are going to work around that, right? It's like it's just sometimes hard to visualize a muscle structure through so much like changing perspectives. Right? It's just hard sometimes. So having like having more knowledge about what you're drawing is what helps you achieve these drawings better, right? Having the base base knowledge of having like basic shapes become 
something is step one. Step two through infinity is learning all the different shit that you can apply to that. It's like skins. Think about it like that. Think about you, like your art style is like a skin, right? So you can decide that your art style one day will be like a really cool animated look, right? Or you can decide that one day that your skin is going to be a werewolf. These are based on the same concept as your basic leg. But it's your imagination and your knowledge, and I guess plus imagination. That is what gives you your style. It's not copying other people until you figure out the way to do it. Yeah, that's a way to go about it. And I used to think that before, right? So there's videos with me saying that, you know, like the easiest way to create your own like style is to just take the things that you like from other people and be able to uh, replicate it into your a mixture of your own things. But, you know, just like anyone else, I, I learned and I evolved. And I like, you know, like it, things change. Like my way of thinking has changed considerably. And once i went back and i revisited all these basic things like it made me realize that i never really focused on my basics when i was actually learning i just try to rush it in the hopes of i'd be able to just draw something cool i just wanted to draw something cool because i was so desperate to draw something cool because everyone around me was drawing something cool and i did not want to be left behind I did not want to be, uh, you know, like left in the dust while everybody else was creating their own styles and stuff. So instead of focusing heavily on learning more about my foundation so that I could apply my imagination to my style and therefore stand out, I was desperate to be able to just compete and be hanging on to the notion of everybody else finding their own shit before I did. Right. That was where I that's where I lost myself. Because if I would have kept going with my foundation work and actually tried heavily to understand it, like everything would have made sense so much more. Instead of me struggling for years trying to figure out how to draw a hand because I can't, I just don't know how to draw a damn hand. It took me about like two weeks to figure out exactly how to draw a hand in a way that makes sense to me by just simply paying attention to how everything is shaped and how it applies to this basic principle that we have practiced a million quadrillion times in our life. So that is why we learn these things and this is why we need this this is why this is so important this is why this is just the entry pass to everything right this is your ticket learning this is your ticket to being a comic book artist a storyboard artist an animator an illustrator this is why you go to art school to learn this shit and drill it into your brain this is why you don't need to go to art school because if you learn this shit by just listening to people like myself and just listen and listen and listen and just pay attention and draw and be self-critical, you will be at my level or higher within a year because I'm not a naturally talented artist. I'm just a good and dedicated artist. I'm a talented artist in the sense of teaching. But when it comes down to my art, like I have a great understanding of it. But it's come from a lot of work and a lot of practice, which I am happy to share with all of you. Because I like you guys. Being able to connect shapes like this. 
and then confidently and i'm not saying like just playfully like confidently being able to map out the surfaces takes time this it takes effort and it takes a lot of time to be able to learn how to do this properly right you can just go up and just start doodling shapes like this and then see how you can make them look like 3d shapes and find their surfaces overlap them a little bit see what happens and then just go and start pulling things out of these little holes that you see right start playing around with the idea of bringing these shapes in and creating negative spaces cutting shapes out of them and even though this is literally nothing like this blob is just like a bunch of little shapes it starts to look like something eventually if you add enough detail to different areas this is a very heavy concept when it comes down to drawing from imagination because this is something very important that needs to be thought of whenever you're drawing so that your poses have depth so that your poses have you know dimension So if you actually practice this enough, poses become a little bit easier. Things that are hard right now for you, like maybe feet or hands, become a little bit easier to draw. You know, and how to study and draw from life so that I can draw from memory. Well, yeah, you have to draw from life before you can draw from memory. Uh, you need to learn how things are made. You need to learn how to replicate that with your own skills, with your own, like, you know, like abilities with your, like, I can teach you guys the basics i can teach you guys how to approach it but actually showing you guys the like how to use the pen how to like flick it and how to like actually maneuver it that that comes from you right that has to be something that you approach on your own because that is something that i can't just hold your hand and tell you you got to put a little bit of pressure no it, that would be impossible for me to do but i can be like okay these are the little this are, these are the line qualities that you can achieve with a pen that's the range you have with a ballpoint pen it can go from minuscule a little bit more. So this is the range that you can get with a ballpoint pen. I can tell you this is as much as I can range. I can probably get even thinner than that. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, it's about the same. this is how you sketch with ballpoint pen you start with these little tiny lines and then by the time you get to these lines let me show you let's say we have a bunch of lines the moment that i start adding 
my darker lines, those initial lines just kind of disappear. Because of the contrast, right? And then if I start adding details inside, it gives me almost a, the look of a perfect drawing. So understanding this is what, like this is something that I can show you guys the range so you guys understand this. But I would never be able to be like, here's a pencil. Let me show you how to draw this, uh, you know, like a certain way, like how to like angle the pen and stuff like that. That's just on you. All right. So concepts that we learned today. If we're drawing a head, wherever we draw this little tiny indentation is where our eyes are going to go. Our eyebrows and our nose canal create a mask. This gives us the side of our head immediately. Now you can always shape it any way you want, you know, modify it after you're done, you know, like creating your basic layout. And then you can start creating all your different elements based on the mapping of your shape. The cheekbone is already given to you because of the mask. The eyebrows are already given to you because of the mask. The side of your head is already given to you and your ear comes next to your cheekbone. This is your cheekbone. So your ear is a little bit behind that. Your ear connects to your jaw. And the back of your head, obviously, is the back of your head. This area is provided to you for the nose bridge, which already gives us space for our eyes. So that is what we learned today. Not bad, right? Pretty interesting, pretty cool way of seeing things. It's just another fun little way that you guys can like learn to map out your characters a little bit better. And once you have a little bit more understanding of anatomy, you'll be able to actually have a little bit more fun. But this is a fantastic way to approach it at first, to just learn how to like figure out slightly different angles, slightly different positionings, just because you can think about it a little bit different than you have before. Therefore, you'll have the ability to play around with a new concept and see if it actually works for you. can always change your shape even as you're drawing it it's not set in stone if something doesn't look right you change it how can I draw proportions better well actually that's very simple Go out in public and draw people. Analyze what you're drawing. Like, people are all around you. You need to just go out and draw them so you can understand proportions better. So, I can give you explanations of proportions and be like, well, you can draw somebody that's like eight feet tall and eight heads tall, blah, 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 seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's like seven heads tall, right? 
I'm gonna give you the shitty spiel that everybody gets that makes fucking no sense because like it just doesn't make sense so most of the time people have about seven heads to their body system apparently the first head is your head the second two heads are your rib cage wait is it or the two no the two heads is this is like rib cage and yeah these two heads are rib cage and body so that's your body head body then the two legs these are for the first part of the legs and then this is for the second part of the legs So, I don't know, it's something like this. The arms, again, are proportioned like to the belly button and down to the arm or to the thigh or something like that. I always hated thinking about things like this. Like, it really did always bug the hell out of me to be able to think things like this. So, eh, eh, nope. The way that I like to think about it is that people are proportioned differently. Like there's people that can be like super pudgy and little. There's people that can be really tall and skinny. Right? So just understanding things, how, like what things go inside of them that make them them is more important to me than understanding a proportion. So... I know that my body has to have a rib cage and it has to have a pelvis. If it has legs, it has a pelvis. And if it has arms or a chest, it normally has a rib cage. So most things do. So in this case, let's draw, we're gonna keep everything within these shapes. So I need space for a head. So I'm gonna draw my rib cage nice and wide, right? I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. That's my rib cage. Now I need to come up with a pelvis. So in this case, it seems like the legs are right there. So my pelvis is going to be as simple as creating a little underwear shaped thing. Did we kill the pen? We have killed the pen! Woohoo! Celebration likes! Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I love it when we empty a pen. Let's grab another one. Okay. All right. So we have a rib cage, and then yeah, it's as easy as creating a little shape like this, right? Just so you have an indication of the areas where your legs would come out from. Now, this one, let's create the rear collar, uh, that right there. Now, I know that the area in between these two is going to be my squishy zone. So I can choose to make these fat. I can choose these guys to be skinny. In this case, we'll make this one into a girl. So we'll make her hips a little bit wider and we will taper in the midsection for this guy let's make him into like a, an orc so he's gonna be nice and wide and he's gonna have a nice big belly okay then we go on to you know the arms uh, or the head we can just we need to add the head in this so we have to keep it within this area so the head is normally not going to be bigger than the ribcage. So you can at least keep that in mind. And it connects to the front of your ribcage. In this case, this person's going to be a little bit bulkier, like a little tank. So we have our head. And this head is still going to connect to that ribcage. So you would not see a neck because the neck would be kind of like leaning back down. Right. 
since we know where our rib cage is, we know that our collarbone is at the top of here, so therefore his shoulders and stuff are going to be coming out from here. Same thing with this one. Our collarbone is right here at the bottom of our neck, so we know that our shoulders are going to come out from right there. The first segment of our arms. Normally, normally, it goes from shoulder to the bottom of your rib cage. Your bottom of your rib cage will be an indicator of your first segment of your arm. The second one will be about the same distance as your first section plus your fingers. So you're going to have that same distance is your hand and your forearm plus your fingers. That same distance plus your fingers. Rib cage, that same distance plus your fingers gives you a decent looking hand. Legs, it's evenly split, but you have to overlap them a little bit. So you have the first segment that goes from your thigh and your, your thigh and your kneecap, and then the second part overlaps a little bit and creates that same distance. So if you keep those concepts in mind, you can position and you can like proportion things really well either being a normal human or more of a you know stylized one <laughs> so technique always fucks me up well technique is the hard part of being an artist it, like being an artist is not hard like Unless you consider the fact that you need all that technical skill, right? Like, if you don't consider the technical skill, yeah, of course it's not hard. It's easy. Yeah, being an artist is easy. Oh, you just get to be creative all day? Oh, no, that's cute. That's awesome. Yeah, of course it's easy if you think about it like that. But it's not. Art is all about learning and keep learning and like understanding yourself and understanding what you can do and what you can achieve and what you can accomplish with your skill sets that you have. And then seeing that and then being like, shit, I don't know anything. I need to get better. And then you get better and then you're like, ah, shit, I did not know anything before. How is it that I was doing art like 10 years ago when I didn't know shit? And that's the feeling that just comes over and over and over and over and over you'll get to a point where you are just very knowledgeable in certain aspects of art right there will be things that you are incredibly good at just because you've been repeating them for so many times It's going to come to the point where you are going to want to push your skills a little bit further. And you're not going to really understand what to do or how to approach it. Because the higher you get on the totem pole of being a good artist, the less resources you have to make yourself a better artist. So, the way that I teach is meant for people to teach themselves, right? And this is not just me like, oh, I'm gonna go watch a video. No, it, it's for me, I'm trying to teach you guys how to understand how to be critical of yourselves so that you can actually go out there and learn how to get better with your own understanding so that you don't have to rely on finding tutorials or asking people questions like how do I find my style not saying that that's a bad question to ask that is a fantastic question to ask because it's a question that a lot of people have you know have in mind how do you draw better 
you you listen to me and you uh and you uh and you uh draw alongside with me whenever we're drawing that's how you get better Once you understand certain concepts and they start making sense, you can start having fun with your drawings again. Because then it's just a matter of understanding what you want to create. And then it's just simple to just map it out because it just becomes, it doesn't become a chore. Right? It doesn't become a guessing game. The guessing game ends. There's no more guessing game. So once you're not guessing where things go, where things do, what, how you draw something, how you draw it from a different angle, how you draw it from the front, how you draw it from the side, once you get rid of those, uh, it's just a lot easier for you to actually create what you want to create be it yourself as a tiki <laughs> myself as a tiki mug <laughs> that'd be kind of cool and it can be the next uh characters for like the next animation that's going to be popular for your dreams of you like character designers out there you know this is a fantastic way to just learn how to do all that stuff or visualize it like that But we are coming close to the end of our stream today. So as we get closer to the end, I would like to thank you guys for staying with me and being with me throughout this whole time. Second, I would like to announce that I do have art book that I just released today. It's called Art Block, and it's a compilation of a lot of the doodles that we've done over our streams. So if you guys are a fan of my streams and you guys want to actually help, you know, me and support me. Uh, you guys have a new option to be able to do so. There's uh, Art Block, there's Coffee Break Doodles, and there's Pinups. A little bit of everything for a little bit of everybody. So the next book that's coming out is Cute Animals and Derpy... Cute and Derpy Animals. So that one's going to be awesome. I'm already working on that one. And other than that, let's uh, finish out the page. And then, uh, yeah, because I hate talking about money. Like, I, I hate it. I, I just, it, it, it actually hurts my brain to, like, like have to sell myself. But, uh, it's a necessary thing. Like, everybody has to do it. I'm currently watching you while badly doing an animation of a dragon head turn. <laughs> a dragon head, huh? Let me draw a dragon. Uh, let's see. Do dragons have ears? I don't think dragons have ears. Do they have spikes? And they have horns, right? They have horns. I don't know if they have horns. Huh. 
Do you draw dragons with floppy ears? What? How, how would you... What? Okay, so we have a dragon head. How would you draw a dragon with floppy ears? Like that? Kind of looks like a puppy now. <laughs> that looks like a puppy. <laughs> like smaller bunny ears okay one more dragon since we have the space already so smaller floppy ears Smaller floppy ears. That still seems weird to me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, a couple more doodles. Let's do this into an eyeball. Let's make a closed eyeball. And let's make a profile eyeball. Uh, just a uh, handful more sketches. Uh, let's see. We can draw like a spaceship here. So, we are going to be calling it a night. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. If you guys do want to purchase my books, you guys can find the links through my Instagram. If you guys want to follow and watch this along again, there is my YouTube channel that you guys can follow and subscribe to. And there's my Instagram where I post most updates of my life and everything else if you guys want to get to know me a little bit better. So, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. You guys kick some butt, take some names, doodle a little, smile a little, laugh a little, and I will see you guys tomorrow.